Students, counselors, thank you so much for joining us for their Yes Prep virtual college fair. We're thrilled that you're joining us for the B sessions right now. A few housekeeping items before we begin with today's session. First and foremost, your camera and your microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you have any questions, make sure to utilize that Q&A. As I mentioned, the Q&A is available for you to submit questions at any time. We have the organizations here throughout the duration of the session. You do not need to wait for them to be presenting to be asking questions of that organization. You can submit questions throughout the duration of the time and they're here to answer your questions. We encourage you to sign up for additional sessions. The C session is happening after this. Um, and that will conclude this Yes Prep Virtual College Fair, but go ahead and check out this C session. And we are recording this session and all of the sessions, and those recordings will be made available at strivescan.com slash yesprep very soon. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague from the United States Air Force. Today's session, we have the United States Air Force ROTC, United States Army ROTC, United States Naval Academy, United States Coast Guard, College Student Pre-Commissioning Initiative and United States, United States Coast Guard Academy. So Grayson, go ahead and grab screen share from me. And as they do to prepare for their presentation, a reminder that you can send in those questions at any time via that Q&A that you see there. Uh, Grayson, go ahead and take it away. All right, thank you very much, Zach. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Second Lieutenant Grayson Moore, and I'm here to speak to you about Air Force ROTC. A little bit about myself. Uh, I served six years on the enlisted side of the house before the Air Force let me separate and go through Air Force ROTC to earn my commission and graduate uh, with a degree. So that's the program we're going to be speaking to you about today. It's a college-centered focused uh, plan where you're going to come in commission as an officer. My contact information is down there in the bottom, but I'll share it in the chat when I'm done. So an officer is a uniform, uh, is a member of uniform service or armed forces who is a, in a leadership role who holds authority. About 20% of our airmen and guardians are officers at this time. And in order to be an officer, you have to pass through a commissioning source. So that would be OTS, Officer Training School, US Air Force Academy, or Air Force uh, Reserve Officer Training School, or CORE, which is what I'm here for. Air Force ROTC is a program that functions alongside your typical college degree, uh, where you're gonna be taking this course to fulfill your Air Force ROTC requirements and commissions. It provides a scholarship, uh, professional development, and guaranteed jobs. And it's, it seeks to produce leaders of character who are thinkers and uh, who are leaders. And we're at about 1,200 campuses across the country. Within Texas, if you're looking to stay a little bit more local, here are our main institutions that have Air Force ROTC. And here's a more exhaustive list of our institutions. Uh, these, these bulleted lists underneath the main institutions are called uh, Crosstown Universities. It's, it's basically a satellite institution where you can go and get your degree and then you travel back to that home university to get your Air Force ROTC curriculum completed. Air Force ROTC cadet life is about the same as your typical cadet life. It just offers you more opportunities that your typical uh, civilian track counterparts wouldn't have. So you can visit military bases and go to jump school, uh, participate in rifle and drill teams, go on, uh, go on trips to foreign countries and nations where you can learn about their culture and languages. Your timeline in Air Force ROTC is, is a five to three year timeline but the typical cadet is gonna be tracked as a four-year cadet. And your, your life will look a little bit like this. You're gonna come in as a freshman and learn the building blocks, the foundation of what being an Air Force officer is about. As a sophomore, you're gonna build upon those and earn those hard and soft skills that you're gonna to need to be a leader. And then during your summer, between your sophomore and junior year, you're gonna to go to a field training evaluation. Uh, it's a two-week forum where you're gonna participate with other cadets and you're gonna learn and train and grow together and come back as upperclassmen. As an upperclassman, you're gonna design the cadet training environment. And that all culminates in you eventually commissioning uh, after graduating and becoming a second lieutenant and earning those gold bars. But it is, a, it is a structured training environment where you eventually learn to take over and lead that training environment. Uh, within the Air Force, there's about 130 plus career uh, specialties that you can go into and about 30 different career tracks. So you can see here, if you wanted to uh, become a medical doctor or a lawyer, you have that opportunity in the Air Force. If you want to do something more, uh, 
more technically minded, you can do cyberspace intelligence, you can do civil engineering, um, pretty much everything you can do in the civilian world translates into the Air Force to include those jobs like pilot, uh, where you're going to be doing a little bit more than your typical commercial pilot would be. Within the Space Force, they're looking for a flatter command structure, so you're going to have just these five career fields to choose from. If you want to join the Space Force, you're going to have to be in these career fields, but every career within the Air Force has an opportunity to work at Space Force bases, locations, and work with the Space Force. Uh, those opportunities I spoke about earlier that you have a little bit over your civilian counterparts, you're going to be able to go study abroad with Project Go, uh, where you can learn language and culture. You can go to leadership conferences where you talk to past, present, and future uh, military leaders and civilian leaders in our government. There's an incentive rides where you can go and fly with pilots, learn about how, what it's like to fly a plane, and whether or not that might be something you're interested in. You can do free fall training where you're jumping out of a plane, uh, soar training where you're learning to pilot a glider, and seer training where you're learning survival skills. There's several internships across the country where you can go and work at NASA or other cyber-minded institutions and, and learn about what they do. So the scholarship I'm here to speak to you about today is called high, the High School Scholarship Program. It's for high school seniors and it occurs every single year. Uh, there are requirements here where you have to be a citizen after, so at the end of your scholarship term for that first year of uh, college, you have to be a US citizen and you have to be at least 17 years of age. Your academics are listed here. On the left are the minimums, on the rights are the average. You do have to complete a fitness assessment and an interview, uh, but don't worry too much about those. You need to get the paperwork done before you really need to worry about the interview. And the fitness assessment is, is checking a box to see, hey, um, this individual attempted the fitness assessment. We're not expecting you to pass with flying colors at Air Force active duty standards just yet. And the application closes January 13th, 2022. Uh, there's three scholarships here. Don't worry too much about the money on the Type 2. Air Force, uh, ROTC, those scholarships turn out to be pretty much full rides everywhere you go, because at any institution that has an ROTC detachment for the Air Force, those institutions will actually lower their tuition for you to where that 18 k a year will cover, if not everything, almost everything for your tu tuition. All right. Thank you very much for your time. I've been Second Lieutenant Grayson Moore. And uh, we'll take questions at the end. I'll go ahead and post my contact information. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Grayson, for sharing that information. Next up on the list, I'd like to encourage my uh, colleague to grab screen share. We have the United States Army ROTC. So if they want to grab screen share and prepare for their presentation, as they do so, a reminder to use that Q&A, send in those questions. If you have a general question for one of these branches, make sure to indicate that in your question or a more general question, in which case all of our presenters will respond. So uh, United States Army ROTC screen share looks good. Go ahead and take it away. You are on mute. Oh, there we go. Yep. So. Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Captain Stephen Cherry, and I'm also joined by Major Brown, who uh, were both a part of the Strategic Officer Recruiting Detachment. So I'll go ahead and get right into the slides. So similar to the Air Force ROTC presentation, we have a lot of the same uh, principles behind our classes. So ROTC, for us, this is what it looks like, which is primarily a class in college that is designed to commission officers. Similar to Air Force ROTC, we have over 1,200 co colleges across the nation, such as Embry-Riddle, uh, Harvard, Yale, or if you want to stay local, Sam Houston, U of H, uh, Texas A&M, a lot of the same places that Air Force ROTC would be at. We also have Army ROTC. Down here, I have first four semesters equals no military commitment. Uh, please keep that in mind for a later slide in a second. So this is what the classes look like for Army ROTC. So similar to Air Force, uh, a couple classes per week with a leadership lab. Uh, so that you would be putting into practice what you learn during the during the lectures uh, into into actual practice during those labs. And then we have the training sessions each week, a leader training exercise and a weekend per semester. And then 
instead, well, unlike Air Force, where they do it between their sophomore and junior year, for Army, you'll have your training exercise, your field training exercise in between your junior and senior years. And then on top of that, we also have uh, other ROTC opportunities such as military schooling. So you can compete to uh, take classes such as airborne and, and air assault and all that sort of stuff and participate in a ROTC clubs like Color Guard. And it, ROTC in general, it will not prevent you from taking classes, uh, well, taking a extracurricular activities or sports or joining a fraternities or sororities. It's something that you're doing in addition to all of that. So that's the, so that was the what is ROTC and this is the so what, which is the scholarships, similar to what the Air Force offers. Uh, we will cover full tuition or we'll cover $5,000 per semester for room and board. So say if you have a different scholarship that already covers your full tuition, then we can also cover the room and board, uh, clearing up all the rest of the costs of college. And then on top of that, the $600 per semester book allowance and the $420 a month stipend. So as I mentioned before about the four semesters of, uh, that you can take without a military commitment, if you choose to do so, uh, you can take up to those first four semesters and decide later that you want to try uh, actually uh, actually getting the scholarship for Army ROTC, at which point you could compete for a two and three year campus based scholarship. But if you're going to compete for the four year national scholarship, you would be competing with everyone. And that is done through this application site right here. These are the requirements. Uh, we break it down into three categories that are easy to remember, which is scholar, athlete, and leader. So having a good GPA and SAT or ACT, the higher, having higher scores makes you more competitive, but these on the screen are the minimum. And then athlete, uh, being able to co complete the fitness assessment and if you play any sports in high school, and then leader, if you have any leadership positions in high school, such as student council or things like that, or National Honor Society. And if you do any volunteering events outside of, outside of school, things like that make you more competitive. So here are the career opportunities for Army. Uh, so comparing to Air Force, we have some differences in the jobs. But what I want to encourage all of you to do is to conduct your research on what sort of jobs uh, are different between the different branches. So I'll give an example. A veterinarian, not all of the Army branches have a veterinarian. So if you're, so if you're looking for a specific, uh, if you're looking for specific jobs like that, I encourage you to do your research on which ones are more applicable to you. Over here, we have a example pay chart. Uh, when you commission with your four-year degree, uh, you'll, you'll start off as a second lieutenant and your obligation is four years active duty or eight years in the reserve, which is part-time military and otherwise a full-time civilian. Uh, the only other thing that I wanna mention on this slide would be the officer specific jobs. Uh, for these jobs that have additional education required in order to in order to major with those degrees, such as lawyer or medical practitioner or veterinarian, uh, Army ROTC will also pay for you to get those degrees. So you would you would complete your first four years and then uh, commission as a second lieutenant, and then you would continue your education towards those other degrees while being paid as a second lieutenant. So keep that in mind as a additional opportunity that we offer. And that pretty much sums up Army ROTC. So I will, I'll go into the Q&A to answer questions in the meantime, but other than that, that's all I have. Thank you for listening. Excellent, thank you, Stephen, so much for sharing that information. Uh, next up, we do have the United States Naval Academy. So as the Naval Academy, go ahead and grab screen share, Ryan, and prepare for your presentation. Reminder to use that uh, Q&A, send in your questions. 
I will also mention at this time, uh, we have not uh, had the representatives from the United States Coast Guard College Student Pre-Commissioning Initiative arrive in the space, nor the United States Coast Guard Academy. So um, this currently is the complete list once uh, Ryan and the United States Naval Academy concludes. Um, so uh, I will hand it over to Ryan for the United States Naval Academy. Good, thank you. Uh, everyone see that? Looks good. Um, so my name is Lieutenant Ryan Louie. I work in the admissions office for the United States Naval Academy. I was also a 2014 graduate of the institution, became a Navy pilot upon graduating, did that for about six years, and now I work back at the Naval Academy. <clears throat> the Naval Academy is located in Annapolis, Maryland. We're a four-year institution. Everyone who comes here will end up graduating as an officer in the Navy or Marine Corps. Uh, Annapolis, Maryland is right between Baltimore, and Washington, D.C., so a lot going on in the area. Picture of our campus at the bottom, it's pretty small, right next to downtown Annapolis and the Severn River. Uh, everything is self-sustained. Uh, anything you need on a daily basis is walkable within 10, 15 minutes. We offer 33 Division I varsity sports at the school, um, which is third most in the country after Ohio State and Stanford. So a huge variety of sports. If you want to compete at a Division I level, we probably offer your sport here. <clears throat> Here's a list of all of our majors. Uh, we also have a new one in the Humanities Social Sciences section called Foreign Area Studies. This is a combination of history, political science, and a language. So you'll pick an area of the world, learn its history while learning the language and the political landscape currently going on. Uh, hugely popular so far. Uh, but the big takeaway here is we're primarily a STEM school. We have a lot more engineering weapons, math and science majors than humanities, social sciences. Um, they're all great, though. Uh, lots of great labs here on campus. If you want to major in humanities, social sciences, you have to take at least two years of one of those minor languages as well to round out your curriculum. We have small class sizes, similar to what you likely have in high school. Uh, there's no lecture halls. Everything's taught by professors on campus, no TAs or associate professors. Uh, we have one-to-one -one military to civilian faculty. That's because you have military professionalism, ethics, leadership, navigation, those kind of classes uh, taught by the military faculty there. <clears throat> uh, this is a typical schedule in the life of a midshipman, very busy. Uh, standard academics you'd have at a typical school with all of the military rigor of a service academy uh, rolled into one. So it's set up similar to a high school style. You have classes in the morning and afternoon broken up by lunch period in between, uh, multiple formations throughout the day uh, in your military units to get accountability, pass the information the student body needs. And then in the afternoon, there's a two hour block for athletics, whether you're a varsity athlete, club athlete, or intramural athlete. Everyone does some form of athletics at the Naval Academy. So there's that block every day. And then in the evening, there's a study period for you to get your work done, especially important freshman year when there's a lot of constraints in your time. So time management skills, uh, looking at the schedule is hugely important in the application process. We like to see that you're staying busy in high school, not just succeeding academically, but also athletically or at ECAs, whatever you enjoy, just staying busy, showing that you're able to manage your time and still succeed. Here's a list of all of our varsity sports. Once again, all division 1A, we can re recruit for everything except for sprint football and offshore sailing. Sprint football is lightweight football, uh, just with a weight limit, 180 pounds or something nowadays. Uh, if you're interested in being recruited for varsity sports, you can go to navysports.com. We're looking at students from all over the country. So that's the best way to reach out to our coaches to be looked at for recruitment. Uh, we offer hundreds of ECAs as well. We're looking for well-rounded students, so we like to offer those same opportunities while you're here at the Naval Academy. These are some of our more popular ones. Uh, pay and benefits. Every student is on uh, full scholarships. That covers tuition, room and board, medical and dental. Medical and dental is covered under TRICARE, which is military health insurance. You'll have that after you graduate as an officer as well. You also get paid to go to school here about a third of what you get paid as an officer right after you graduate. Uh, it starts at 125 a month. Um, you get 1200 plus or minus 100, but you only see about 125 your freshman year up to 500 plus by the time you're a senior. Since everything else is covered, this is fun money for you to save or spend on whatever you want. 
Uh, and after four years of hard work, everyone, regardless of your major, graduates with a Bachelor of Science. That's because we have a core curriculum that's so STEM heavy. Even if you're an English or history major, you still get a Bachelor of Science from the Naval Academy. Uh, commissioned as an officer in the Navy or Marine Corps and five year service commitment paying back that education you received. Uh, if you choose to go aviation, so the options from the Naval Academy, you can be a Navy pilot or a Naval flight officer. If you choose one of those two, you owe six to eight years because of the flight training you get afterwards. Other options, you can be a surface warfare officer, so officer on one of the many ships in the Navy, submarine officer, uh, or Marine Corps ground, Marine Corps air as well. We also graduate about 30 Navy SEALs every year, uh, 15 explosive ordnance disposal officers, and then a myriad of uh, restricted line, med corps, cyber operations, intel, um, civil engineer corps, that stuff. Uh, we have some summer programs as well for rising 9th, 10th, and 11th graders in high school. This is a technological academic-based summer program uh, at the Naval Academy. You get to stay in the dorm, go to the classrooms, interact with midshipmen and teachers uh, for about a week, see what life is like here. And then for rising seniors in high school, this is summer seminar. Uh, it's a very involved program. You get some academics, but also what life is like as an actual midshipman. Uh, it's a great experience, the best exposure you can get to see if this is really what you want to do or not. Uh, applications for both of these are January to March uh, 2022 for you all. And then this is just the legal requirements to attend a service academy. You have to be at least 17 years old, not older than 23 by the time you show up. A U.S. citizen, uh, unmarried, not pregnant, no legal obligation to support a child or other individual, and of good moral character. Uh, and I think I will wrap it up there and stand by for Q&A. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so Thank much, you so Ryan, much. for sharing that information. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we unfortunately did not have anyone from the United States Coast Guard College Student Pre-Commissioning Initiative arrive or the United States Coast Guard Academy. So with that, I'm going to encourage the uh, three colleagues that I have joining us to go ahead and turn on their cameras. We're going to do a round robin and uh, ask questions of uh, the group here. So um, I've got a few questions that I just want all of you to answer uh, just more candidly. So you've had your, your time to present on your uh, organization, but uh, I'm a little bit more curious. What, uh, we'll start with Grayson and go in the uh, order that we presented. What is a misconception that you'd like to curb about your branch or about your organization? So Grayson, let's start with you. Uh, we're not all pilots. So the, the careers here, uh, pretty, pretty varied and diverse. Um, and then also for ROTC, I've had a lot of people ask like, oh, then when do I go to OTS when I'm done for officer training? ROTC is the officer training. That's the other thing. So when you graduate, you're ready to go on to active duty. So you get that degree and you get that commission at the same time. Awesome. Steven, what's a, a misconception you'd like to curb in this process about your organization? I think it would be the same thing that uh, Lieutenant Grayson mentioned, uh, mainly that uh, students think, oh, I'm going to have to go to basic training and all that sort of stuff. And I think they uh, are misconstruing the difference between officer and enlisted. So officers are the ones leading the enlisted corps, and they're getting paid more, but they also have additional obligations and responsibilities. So I think that's... Uh, one of the things that I would clear up. Ryan, how about you? Yeah, I think those are great points as well. Um, the biggest confusion we get is we are a four-year college uh, primarily, but also a military accession source. So um, everything here is as a typical college would. We're not an enlisted recruitment source or anything like that. You graduate as an officer after four years of school here, either in the Navy or Marine Corps not only on ships, but all sorts of jobs. It's pretty evenly spread between aviation, submarines, ships, Marine Corps, about a quarter of the class to each of those. What tips would you give for the juniors watching, the juniors in high school that are watching right now about next steps for them? As juniors, what do they need to be doing the rest of this junior year? And then what do they need to be preparing for senior year? The next question will be tips for seniors. But for right now, what tips do you have for the juniors sitting and watching? Grayson, we'll start with you again. Um, my advice to you is, since I'm here representing the Air Force, look into the Air Force Academy. Um, you have a lot of time in, in, at the junior level to look into the Air Force Academy. 
And uh, if that doesn't seem to be what you want to do, start working on your package and start working on your GPA for Air Force ROTC. Steven, we'll go to you. Juniors, advice for those juniors. Uh, the main thing I would say is uh, working on SAT, ACT, and ASVAB scores. And uh, we actually have a website. It's called March to Success uh, 2 with the letter 2, I mean, number 2. And uh, that's, the, that's a website that you can utilize as free to help you boost those scores for making yourself more competitive. And then, of course, participating in extracurricular activities and playing sports. Steven, go ahead and throw that uh, website into the chat for all of the attendees. That'd be great. Ryan, advice that you have for the juniors in the space. Yep. So I'd say all the stuff previously mentioned applies to us as well. Uh, I'm going to tag on the SATs, take them early and often. Uh, for us, the admissions board only sees your best scores that you've ever taken. So take them as many times as you want. It'll only help you. Also, really focus on your technical courses in school, your math and science tracks. Those are hugely important. Uh, specifically for the Naval Academy. All right, now let's focus on the seniors in the space. Is it too late? Where should they be in the timeline? If you're a senior watching this right now, advice that you have. So we'll start back at Grayson. It is not too late. Um, go ahead and email me. I put my contact information in the chat. I'll put it again later, uh, but start working on that application. I linked two uh, web pages on afrotc.com. And you have plenty of time to get your application in, but that window closes January 13th where you need to have all of your, uh, all of your requirements done on your end. Steven, how about you? So I know I'm here to represent the Army, but what I would say is that uh, apply for all of them because you can always turn down scholarships if you, when you get it. And if you have a specific job in mind, uh, obviously apply for the branch that has that job. But otherwise, if you have something more general in mind, apply for all of them. And if you, you, you're gonna miss all the shots that you don't take. That's great advice, thank you. Ryan, advice for the seniors in the space. Uh, yep, I think that's a great point. Um, every branch has something awesome to offer. So always have backup plans and apply for multiple things. Um, for us, I'd say, if you haven't started an application yet, it's important to do it soon or as soon as possible, jump on that boat. Uh, we have nominations coming up with your local representatives that need to be completed uh, before December, most of the time for you to be eligible for direct admission. Otherwise you'd have to go through a prep school first to attend the service academy. All right, uh, another question, we'll go in reverse order. So Ryan, you're gonna kick things off. Steven, you'll still be sandwiched in the middle there. Mm -hmm. um, the question is, uh, we've talked to nominations, we've talked to applications, uh, at test scores. What is going to help a student really stand out for your specific organization? What's going to really help the, the student's application rise to the top? Um, so Ryan, we'll start with you. Yep. Uh, so definitely academics are hugely important, but also showing leadership potential and time management skills. That's really what helps you succeed as service academy and in the military as a whole. Uh, we're looking for potential leaders for all of these officer positions. So any activities, sports you do, uh, ECA's volunteer work, strive for leadership positions, roles of responsibility in those activities, uh, but mainly do what you enjoy. Um, yeah. Steven, how about for you? Oh, sorry, can you repeat the question? So uh, we've talked about nominations and applications and test scores. What's going to really help a student stand out in the process uh, for the uh, for your specific branch? Okay, I, I would say for that, uh, besides having the good test scores is uh, the leadership positions. If you, if you hold any, well, it's all of it in combination. So having the good test scores, and if you also play sports and have a, like a significant leadership position, like say the uh, battalion commander or sergeant major for a JROTC, or if you're a part of student council or a leader in student council, things like that uh, look really good alongside having those good grades. And Grayson. Uh, ditto on all of that. Uh, understand that individuals who are rating your package or looking at you as a potential cadet are able to see what they're able to see. So um, every part of the package is considered. So whether it's leadership, test scores, whatever else. But once you actually get into the program, um, not quitting, 
is a big thing and learning from your mistakes. So, so being able to say, hey, I gave it my all and, and being able to pick yourself up and dust yourself off because that shows that you can grow and that shows character. Awesome. Final question from me. Uh, just a reminder, the Q&A is still active. So go ahead and send your questions in through there. Uh, but final question for me is, uh, what do you like the most about your specific branch? So Stephen, we'll start with you. What do you like the most about Army ROTC? Uh, so for, for Army, I would say one of the things I like is uh, really how much I've been able to travel and conduct operations all across the world and having a multitude of jobs. But that probably applies for all of the branches, honestly, is that being an officer means uh, doing a multitude of jobs across a multitude of areas and responsibilities. Grayson, we'll go to you next. Um, wow. So it's, it's allowed me to travel quite a bit. Uh, so when I was enlisted, I, I, I worked uh, in Maryland and then I got orders to Korea, had a great time over there. While I was there, I was able to travel. Uh, that 30 days of leave you get a year, which is true for every branch, is great. You can use that to travel and go see and broaden your horizons for things that you just wouldn't typically get to see. So being able to fly just an hour or two to go to Japan while I was in Korea was a wonderful blessing for me and my family. Excellent. And Ryan? Um, yeah, definitely what they all said. Um, as well, I'd say the people, uh, both the people, my peers and leaders I met at the Naval Academy, but also after you graduate, the people you interact with on a daily basis as an officer, even the enlisted service members you're in charge of, everyone's uh, you know, extremely motivated. You meet some of the best people, best friends you'll ever make in your life. So uh, it's a great environment to be. There's a question that came in through the chat. I'll, I'll just toss it to anyone that wants to answer. Um, if I join your branch, can I join another branch? What does that look like? Anyone can go ahead and grab it. There, typically, no, but there are uh, programs that allow you to cross over. It varies by branch. Um, each of them have their own way of saying, yes, you can go, no, you can't go. Um, that one's a harder question, but you can. Another question came in, uh, it's specific to Air Force, but we'll generalize it a little bit more. What's financial aid for all of you look like? Uh, can you apply for financial aid? Uh, Ryan, let's start with you. Financial aid for uh, Naval Academy? Yep, so the Naval Academy, everyone who attends is already on a scholarship. Um, if you get financial aid when you're in high school, applying to different colleges, you can still apply that to the Naval Academy. You'll get an initial loan when you show up that pays for a lot of your uniforms and like school items and stuff. So if you get a loan, like a general school loan, you can apply it to that, um, which will limit the amount of money you have to pay back eventually. Steven, what's financially look like for Army ROTC? So it would be all of the, pretty much all of the details that I had covered earlier in the slide, all, the, all of those uh, like financial benefits for the scholarship. And Grayson? Yep, so you can, you can still use financial aid. Um, so apply your FAFSA, please, please, please get your FAFSA done. Uh, and then yeah, the scholarships that ROTC provides, we also provide a monthly stipend as well. So you get money in your pocket. Uh, and then that textbook allowance, if you don't use it to pay for textbooks, it goes into your pocket too. Uh, aside from that, that tuition payment that we give you with the scholarship. Excellent. A good question came in uh, as well that all, we can all answer. Uh, what is the main thing that is focused in the active duty? What's the main jobs focused in the active duty? Who wants to take that? I could go ahead and start. So active duty, uh, that, so active duty in general spans across the whole spectrum of the military, but for officers specifically, uh, the main things you would be looking at is uh, being in charge of a group of people so often any, well, as a second lieutenant, you're mainly responsible for a platoon, which could be anywhere from 20 to 50 people that are uh, focused on a specific job and you're uh, managing that group of people. Yeah, um, so you always have your individual job in the military. So for example, I was a Navy pilot. 
but my whole job wasn't just to fly planes. When I wasn't flying, I would come down and I was in charge of, say, the maintenance division in our squadron, or you'd be in charge of the enlisted aviation personnel. As an officer, you always have people you're responsible for and leading. So that's the main role of an officer. I'll say ditto. Um, and then there's those pilot roles. There's those, those roles where you're not really going to have a supervisory or a leadership uh, requirement until you get much higher in the ranks. Uh, like in, in pi those pilot roles, you're typically just going to be in charge of yourself, your training, and your proficiency. Whereas other career fields, you could come in as a second lieutenant, brand new, and have 130 people you're in charge of. Um, but you'll get prepped for that while you're in the program getting trained. How often will you see your family while you're in the program? So while in college, I would say that's as often as you're able to make a trip. I, I happen to live two hours away from my home, so I was able to go back pretty often. Um, specifically, while you're at the Naval Academy, I'll say you get the same college breaks that any college would. Uh, it just depends on how far away you live, um, just like any other normal college. When you're out in the military, you have a certain amount of leave days. You're allocated every year. So if your family doesn't live nearby, you can still take time off and go visit them. Um, yeah. So in, in Air Force ROTC, if you're not in class, that time is your time. As long as you keep up with your GPA, your physical fitness, and uh, you're an overall well-rounded cadet, you, you can, on the weekends, you can go drive to your home. Um, and then while you're active duty, uh, you can take your family with you if they are your dependents. So if you have a spouse or children, they come alongside you. There are very few lo duty locations, and that, I'm sure that's true for every other branch here. There are very few duty locations where you can't bring your personal family. But if it's, say, uh, your mom and dad, and they're not your dependent, um, you have leave for that and you can travel. And there's even uh, programs where if, say, it's hardship or something like that, your parents are having a rough time, you can go and be stationed near them. Uh, and that's true for every branch as well, I believe. There's a great question, um, and I think we may use this as our final wrap-up question. Um, we've talked a lot about your experiences and your travel has been a great part of your role and the, the perks of um, specifically your branch. But um, how has it changed you? How has your role in your branch changed you? I think that's a really great question as 17 year olds are thinking about their futures and, um, and the, the big wide world out there uh, outside of Yes Prep, but how has uh, this experience changed you? Uh, we'll go ahead and start with Ryan. Um, sure. So um, I guess you end up meeting people from all different backgrounds, all different walks of life. And I think it just makes you uh, more humble person, more appreciative of um, everything, everything that the U.S. offers as you travel abroad and uh, see the world. But um, I think it's just made me more responsible, uh, more mature person. Ended up leading uh, sailors and Marines throughout my career. Awesome, Grayson. We'll go to you next. Um. Yeah, broadens your horizons. You can learn about all those, all, all the other different cultures around the world. Um, and then for me, financially, I didn't grow up in a great community. I didn't grow up in a great neighborhood. Um, and then to, to understand where I'm at now with my family, uh, two kids, my spouse, and being able to support them would have been a foreign idea to 18-year-old me. Uh, on, on top of that, it's given me hard and soft skills to where um, I'm a more well-rounded person. I Air Force is very good about teaching empathy and leadership, uh, as well as the other branches here. So that's that's some of the skills you can hope to pick up. And Stephen, I think I would say a lot of the same things that they did. Uh, probably the only thing I would add is that, like for myself personally, I'm a very reserved person. So uh, something like the military has helped me break out of that mold a lot more. So if you're if you're worried about like the military like clashing with your personality or anything with that, I would say that the military is full of characters and you're gonna be able to like, no matter what your uh, personality type is, there's a place for you in the military that you can uh, make a difference in. And in our final moments, uh, we'll go back in order, Grayson, Stephen, then Ryan, what are some uh, just kind of wrapping up tips that you have for students 
um, as they leave this session. There's some uh, there's some great questions, great conversation, but just kind of like put a bow on top of this and, and give us your final thoughts. Grayson, we'll start with you. Um, the military is a, is, is a great option. This is one of the best ways, I think, all the, all the representatives here uh, to get a college degree and to better yourself financially, increase your standing, increase your, your understanding of the world. Um, so whatever branch you go into, I have uh, nothing but love for you. If you would like to join the Air Force, please contact me. I'm going to post my contact information. But uh, thank you very much for your time. Great. Thank you, Jake. Uh, Grayson. Let's go to Stephen. Final thoughts, final tips. So what I would say is that uh, for anything that you're choosing to do, that you can think of it as like trying to put up pedestals or like you're trying to prop yourself up and support yourself for whatever your future goals are. And it's okay if you're not exactly clear what those goals are, as long as you're uh, doing more to help, help smooth the path ahead of you. And the military is one of those things that will definitely help. And Ryan. Um, I guess I'd say uh, thank you for even considering one of these options. All the military sources are great, whichever way you tr decide to pursue. Um, but good on you for even considering to join the military. Very small percent of the U.S. would even be in your shoes right now. So uh, good luck in your future endeavors. And Look forward to seeing you if you continue down this road. Well, thank you so much, uh, Grayson and Stephen and Ryan, for sharing this space with uh, the Yes Prep students. And uh, I've learned something. I hope you all have as well, uh, students that are attending. Uh, as you close this window, there will be a very quick survey that will appear. We do ask for your feedback on this specific session. As I mentioned at the beginning, there is a C session happening in the next uh, 18 minutes. It starts right on the hour at 11 a.m. Central. Go ahead and sign up for that final session um, and then check out the recordings. Uh, so you can find this recording. You can go back and get everyone's contact information on their contact slides and check out those recordings. They'll be made available very soon at strivescan.com slash yes prep we'll also be passing them along to the yes prep uh, team to watch those recordings as well thank you again for sharing your time and your space to my presenters and students thank you for joining us for this session this concludes this session um, and uh, if there are any unanswered questions i'm going to give them to the presenters and they can follow up via email afterwards as well um, thanks everyone and have a great rest of the day <laughs>